Welcome to the Network Instruments web presentation. In this session, we'll be discussing the voice over IP capabilities that are found within the Observer product family. To begin, I'll load a trace of voice over IP traffic that I've taken from our network. As you can see, we begin in the expert section under the voice over IP events tab. We'll begin with the VoIP summary and discuss a number of the different aggregate statistics that can be found as, as it regards to voice over IP. As you can see, jitter, lost packets, and the number of packets out of order are all tracked, both for active calls in real time, as well as calls that have been closed, as all of my calls are, and a total of the two columns. Information about burst and gap periods on the network are also tracked. Two different types of scoring, R-factor scoring, which is a scale from 1 to 100, and MOS scoring, which is a scale from 1 to 5, are both tracked as well. Voice over IP utilization percentages, the amount of available bandwidth that's been consumed by voice over IP traffic in your environment is tracked. Call setup durations, again, for both active and closed calls, as well as an aggregate is tracked. The number of codecs that are in use in your environment, in this case, I've only got G711, and the status of your calls, whether they're in the setup teardown process, current open calls, heartbeat registration information, or closed calls in the environment. Further down, we give a breakout of all the different protocols that are occurring due to the voice over IP traffic in your environment. These protocols can be shown in aggregate under the protocol totals, where you can see that I've got SIP, RTP, and RTCP traffic, or they can be broken out by the individual QoS level that they're corresponding to. As you can see, I've got QoS running in this environment, precedent zero, I've got RTP, RTCP, and SIP traffic. And at precedent seven, I've got an individual RTP stream. Now the type of QoS that you may have in your environment will differ, however, we're able to track a number of different QoS parameters, including DSCP, OSPF version 2, and a number of different RFC-defined standards. Next, let's look at the individual calls that made up these aggregate statistics. We'll click on the Calls tab, and as you can see, I've got a listing of all the calls that have occurred. When I right-click, I've got the ability to identify these calls either by a call handle, a call reference information, or by the caller ID information that's carried inside of the frames. Also, information about jitter can be calculated in RTP time units, or it can be calculated in milliseconds, depending on the administrator's preference. The individual streams that exist inside of the call are identified in the fields column under the call details, and as you can see, we've got an RTCP stream, an RTP stream, and then the SIP SDP stream. The stations involved with the communication, the two end devices, as well as the call manager in this case, are all defined by their IP address. The start time of the call, the number of packets involved in both the setup and teardown, as well as in the quality information and the data transport are all listed the end time of the call, duration information, administrative packet counts are all tracked as well. As we expand the individual call, you can see each of the components that's occurred. We've got Russell talking to the MX250, which is our call manager. We've got Dev3 talking to the MX250, again our call manager talking to one of the end stations. And then the two end stations communicating directly with one another. Information in the connection details changes to reflect the line item that you've highlighted. As we scroll to the right, information about the status of the call, its current state, whether it's open or closed, information about the start times, durations, individual call scoring information, QoS levels, and as we continue to scroll over, information about jitter, burst and gap densities and percentages, packets and bytes are all contained. 
An administrator has the ability to reorder or reconfigure the column displays by simply right-clicking on the column headers and removing columns that are not of interest or reordering columns. In order to further analyze this call, I'll highlight the overall call stream, right-click, and run Connection Dynamics. Connection Dynamics visually displays the entire call communication from the setup, the actual communication between the two end stations, and the teardown. As you can see, we begin with Russell sending a SIP invite to the call manager. The call manager then communicates that invite over to the Dev3 system, which responds and sends a ringing notification. The communication then continues, and as you can see, the actual G711 payload then begins between Russell and the Dev3 system. So the two users begin to directly communicate. Scrolling down further, we can see that communication continues. And if we were to scroll all the way to the bottom, we would see the teardown process that occurs between the two end stations and the call manager. Back to the VoIP events tab, we'll drill into an individual stream. In this case, we're interested in the voice over IP communication, the RTP stream that occurred between the two end devices. We'll expand that stream and choose the RTP communication that takes place. Right-click and bring up the RTP RTCP graph. This graph illustrates against a timeline the jitter and packet loss that occurs in the communication from each side of the conversation. Along the top, we have Russell talking to the Dev3 system, the Dev3 system talking to Russell, and a reference graph along the bottom that gives us information about utilization as it compares to the jitter and packet loss that we've experienced on both ends of the call. This allows us to easily reference information about lost packets or jitter that's occurring against the utilization in the environment and make a determination of is bandwidth a constraint in causing problems with our voice over IP communications. Back to the Calls tab. Again, we'll right-click on the RTP stream, and in this case, we may have the need to listen to the call. And so as you can see, we've got the ability to run a play audio or save audio to compile a WAV file from the stream itself and play it back so that a user can hear what the call sounded like, in the case of a video transmission, see what the video looked like, and make a determination of if that call and communication is acceptable for the end users. All of this information is tracked both in real time as well as in post capture. And there's a number of different alarming options that go along with the voice over IP capabilities inside of the observer product family. I'll come to the alarm settings that you see here in the lower left corner. Choose a particular probe of interest. In this case, we'll choose our probe that's located in the core of our network. And under the specific probe settings, We'll expand the voice over IP alarms. As you can see, a number of different alarms exist for tracking things like burst percentages, call setup times, scoring, both MOS scoring and R factor scoring, utilization percentages, setup durations, and QoS parameters. Once an item has been selected to track, Triggers allow the administrator to make a determination of exactly what parameters they want to have applied to that alarm. Under the Actions tab, the administrator is then able to define on a per-alarm basis what action should be taken if the alarm is triggered. A number of different abilities exist, including dialing a pager, sending an email, or starting or stopping a packet capture. The call that we looked at today happened to be a SIP call. However, the call setup could have been handled over H323 or Skinny or MGCP. 
And the codec in use could have been G711 as it was, or G723, G729, or a number of other supported codecs. We appreciate you taking the time to view the web session today. And if you have any further questions about the voice over IP capabilities in the Observer product family, or any of the capabilities that are found inside of the Observer product family, we ask that you please call, call us here at Network Instruments at 800-526-7919 or contact us through our website and we'll be happy to help you out, set up a one-on-one -on -one demo, or provide you with any information that you need. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand by.